introduce me, but again, my name is Josh Silverstein. I'm a professor here at the law school, and I'm the faculty advisor of both the Young Democrats and the American Constitution Society, which I'm very glad are co-sponsoring this, because as Rob pointed out, that makes this a very bipartisan forum. And that leads me to my first point, which is that defending free speech on campus should be a bipartisan issue. Both liberals and conservatives should be staunch supporters of freedom of speech. And I'll offer just two reasons. First, free speech is critical to both the search for the truth, that is at the heart of the mission of the university. Um, if the university is not a forum for robust, uninhibited debate, then the search for truth is corrupted. If there are questions, positions, and perspectives that are off limits in teaching, for example, then students can't receive the type of broad education essential to maximizing learning and developing critical thinking skills. And if such limits apply in the context of research, it becomes too difficult to overthrow orthodoxies that may turn out to be dead wrong. Second, limitations on free inquiry almost universally work to the advantage of those in power. Liberals should thus staunchly support freedom of speech because they're constantly trying to advance the perspectives of racial minorities, women, and other outsider voices that have long been excluded from corridors of power both inside and outside the university. Many on the left complain that free speech is a theory for the privileged, but history definitively shows the opposite. Free speech has perhaps been the most powerful tool for social change, for defeating the powerful, for promoting liberty, justice, equality, and other values. The type of certainty that leads one to believe that you're so convinced that you're right, that you don't even need to listen to the other side and you're even entitled to suppress them, well, that type of certainty is the hallmark of totalitarian thinking. Conservatives should also staunchly support freedom of speech for all these reasons, and because right now, as Rob just noted, conservatives are in the minority in higher education. They're arguably more in need of protection of free speech right now than liberals are, at least in higher ed. Now, there's a second and unfortunate way in which free speech on campus is bipartisan. Threats to free speech come from both the left and the right. The threats from the left tend to come from within the university. Some faculty and a depressingly large number of administrators in higher ed seek to suppress opinions that challenge current orthodoxy, such as diversity, equity, and inclusion. The threats from the right tend to come from outside the university, from government officials that sometimes seek to restrict what is taught and researched in universities. Fortunately, there's a lot less of that, than, as Rob noted, than there was many years ago, but there's still some of it, unfortunately, in areas such as climate change, critical race theory, and diversity. Since this is a bipartisan forum, I'm focusing more on the problems on my side of the aisle. And there's one problem in particular that is addressed in the bill that I quite like. An idea that first gained a lot of popularity when I was in college was that being offended by an idea is sufficient justification to ignore or suppress the idea. I want to start by addressing this problematic view with a quote from the Academic Freedom Statement at University of Arkansas Little Rock, which exists largely due to Rob Steinbuck's efforts. Quote, education is not intended to make people comfortable. It is meant to make them think. Universities are expected to provide the conditions within which hard thought and therefore strong disagreement independent judgment, and the questioning of stubborn assumptions can flourish in an environment of the greatest freedom. It is inappropriate for the university to attempt to shield individuals from ideas and opinions they find unwelcome, disagreeable, or even deeply offensive. Although the university community greatly values civility, and although all members of the university community share in the responsibility for maintaining a climate of mutual respect, concerns about civility and mutual respect can never be used as a justification for closing off discussion of ideas, however offensive or disagreeable those ideas may be to some members of our community." End quote. In other words, the fact that you're offended by an idea is not sufficient reason to suppress it. Among the reasons for this is that any idea can offend. If offensiveness is the ground for suppression, there'll be virtually nothing left to talk about in higher education, especially in classes like constitutional law, where many of the ideas are deeply controversial and offensive to large numbers of people. I will finally add that the arguments that liberals make against free speech often backfire, and the offensiveness argument is no exception. Consider the attacks on critical race theory, which are often driven by a desire to not make people feel bad or offended, 
as a result of certain ideas that might offend about this country's history of slavery, segregation, and racism. Conservative politicians in Florida, in particular, who have attempted to suppress critical race theory, are relying on the same ideas about offensiveness that liberals have used to try to suppress criticism of affirmative action, abortion, and much else. So my side of the aisle has created an in for those arguments, all the more reason for the left to staunchly and universally defend free speech. And I will, oh wait, I wanted to just read one thing from the statute on this offensiveness idea. The bill says, except as provided in some unimportant area, uh, qualifications, a state-supported institution of higher education shall not restrict speech that an individual may find controversial, uncollegial, disagreeable, or offensive. That's just one of the many reasons I support this bill 100%, and I thank Senator Sullivan for continuing to put up the good fight. <laughs>